Johnny, do you have any any yardstick by which you measure your success? Um, no, no, I don't think um, I don't think that's really possible in the eighties. I don't think it's possible for for us anyway, because um, we because things are happening to us that haven't happened to other groups before. Like uh, what? Well, we can't. I can't really find any groups to to measure our success because they're successful for different completely different things that we're successful for because uh, certainly in this country um, a lot a lot of the things that cause upset uh, things that are um, just very on rock and roll and um, we're, we're we're successful and known in this country we're known partly for for being sort of maybe a little bit odd but that's because we do things that are really on rock and roll and pretty pretty straight really I suppose you know um, I mean, say, for instance, with Morrissey, you know, it, everybody wants, thinks it's so odd, you know, what, he's, he should be sort of out ranting and people find it really so odd that he's normal, you know, I mean, that, that he's, uh, well, normal as in sort of doesn't go out clubbing it out of the limelight and doesn't live around with the rock stars and all that kind of stuff. And um, because there, are, there aren't any other groups in, in the past who've... Um, who we've had the same kind of personal things in common with, you know, they've all been sort of pretty much uh, mad hedonistic crazies who've, who've got really successful. I mean, the, the, maybe, you know, the big groups now, are, modern groups aren't that way, you know, say the Mines or U2, you know, but I don't want to sort of lump them in with the, the old hellish rock and rollers, but um, I don't think we're, we're that kind of group either. We're, we're not part of this, the new, big, say, yuppie kind of group, for want of another term. We're really into making bread and making mountainous sounds. I mean, fair play to them, that's all right, but we're not that kind of group. So, um, I mean, obviously there have been tons and tons of group who are, groups who are successful in the same way and bigger and all those things. We're not that massive, but there, aren't, there haven't been that many groups with s such an important non-rock and roll doctrine running through them. So, um, we are different to, to other groups who have happened in the past. Because... But playing in the groups we feel sort of kinship with in the past haven't been in the sort of successful position that we've been in. Individually, the members of the groups haven't made money and haven't been under kind of uh, microscopic uh, scrutiny. It's certainly in this country that Morrissey and myself have sort of fallen prey to. So um, it's, it's an odd thing, really. And it's a new thing. So there isn't any kind of real yardstick we can measure ourselves against, no. You've mentioned the words like doctrine and philosophy mm. a couple of times. Is there like a, a Smith's Manifesto that you and well, Morrissey yeah, have Well, yeah, but that's got? the word I was looking for, actually. Yeah, there is, but, um, I mean, I know I've mentioned it a few times, but only because uh, I've realised it appears that way. It appears very strongly to the outside world and to the public. You know, it's not something that we want to hammer down at, or have hammered down people's throats so that we have a doctrine or, or anything like that. It's just that over the last few years it's become obvious that we do. And that it's and that was something that we should really hang on to, and 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 you know it's just things like um, trying to bring a, a, a new realistic element to um, a ridiculous business, really, an absolutely ridiculous business. Because re you know it's, I keep bringing up the term rock and roll, but we've had to deal with it sometime because we we do have all those all sort of the essential elements, but we. Our doctrine is that we, all the naff and the hideous things that have happened about, as a consequence of rock and roll and all the things that are supposed to be accepted within this music business, we, we don't want to involve that in the group at all, you know. Um, limos are okay, I suppose, now and again. Long hair, drugs, 
baggy trousers, drum solos, concept LPs, um, the normal things that are just current rock and roll that people take for granted, like hideous instrumental mixes on B-sides of singles, um, ridiculous tours, massive crappy venues, bad merchandising to for audience, all these kind of really horrible old stale things that mean nothing to, to young people in, in the 80s in any country. You know, in, in East or West or anything, you know. No one really gives a, a shit about leather trousers anymore, except, you know, people who are trying to, you know, people are hung up on Velvet Underground LPs and stuff. It's all, that's all very boring, but, you know, it's sort of come to a head over the last few years in this country with groups sort of just playing out this kind of rock and roll facade. And, I mean, we're completely different, you know, completely different. Did you come to some kind of dilemma when, when Andy's drug problem became apparent? Yeah, about four years ago, before the group. I mean, I've never had a dilemma with Smith Smiths because of Andy's drug problem. And none of us have really um, come up against some kind of, oh my God, shock. Because it's something that I personally have had to deal with a long time, and Andy's had to deal with, obviously, but the other group members, Morrissey included. And uh, so handled it really well. And it's all sorted out now? Yeah, oh yes, yeah, it's it, well, it sorted out. Yeah, Andy's playing on the RP, he's, he's clean and he's healthy. And, that's been for a long time. It's just that he was busted uh, probably about a year ago, and it's only just come to light now. I mean, all this is really history for us. I can understand, peop understand people being intrigued, but it's, it is really history.